As the Apostle Peter addressed the crowd on the day of Pentecost, he boldly declared in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, and I quote, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and signs and wonders, which God did by him in the midst of you. We believe in miracles and that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The days of miracles are not over. Jesus is still in the miracle business. Wherever you are at this time, the Moriah Miracle Center welcomes you to this, the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. Today is the day of miracles. Today is the day for your miracle. We invite you now to stay tuned and be blessed. A miracle awaits you. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. And wherever you are viewing this telecast today, I want to let you know that a miracle awaits you. God is still in the miracle working business. The scripture tells us yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. And the songwriter add another clause, all may change but Jesus never, glory to his name. So therefore then, the God whom we serve can meet you at the point of your need. Welcome to the Miracle Hour broadcast. I'm Pastor McCall, and I greet you in the precious and the matchless and the powerful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This program comes courtesy the pastors and the members of the Moriah Miracle Center. We are situated at number 119 North Side Road, Moriah, Tobago. That's the church on the hill just before the police station. If you are traveling north and if you are coming into the south, it's the church on the hill after the police station. You cannot afford to miss it. So therefore then, you, you have God if you are going north. You have God before the law. And if you are coming into south, you have the law and then you have God. So therefore, you cannot afford to misbehave. We're going to keep you straight. We're going to keep you in line. Hallelujah. Because any man in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are made brand new. Today, I want to continue sharing on that topic, the man, Job. We looked at Job among his family. We looked at Job in his personal life. We looked at Job from his economic life. And today, we want to look at Job during a situation or situations which he faced, Job during crisis, Job experiencing problems and difficulties and how he was able to conduct himself and how God was able to pull him through and see him through. So call a friend and let them know that the miracle hour is on at this point in time on TIN 137 and a miracle awaits them. I will be back to share with you in a short while again from the word of God. But before I do that, let me extend an invitation to you. Come join us any Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. in our Christian Education Hour, known as Sunday School. That is followed by our worship and celebration service at 9.30 a.m. And we're having wonderful times in the presence of the Lord. This Sunday, the 1st of July, we are going to be there and it's our communion service. So why not come and join us and fellowship with us in the presence of the Lord. On Tuesdays, we have our prayer and our Bible study. And on the second and the fourth Sundays of each month, the young people meet for their program. So feel free to join us Sunday morning at 8.30 or at 9.30 or at 7.30 on Tuesday in our prayer and Bible study or 
on the second and fourth Sundays of any month where our young people meet at 6.15 p.m. for their program. So stay tuned. I will be back in a short while again to share with you from the Word of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let me read to you from the Word of Almighty God. Those of you who have just joined us, welcome. And those of you who have stayed, praise the Lord. I'm reading today from Job chapter 2, the second chapter of Job. And I'm commencing my reading at the seventh verse unto the end. And let's read together. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a prochet to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job in crisis. Now all of us in this life at some point in time go through period or periods of crisis where we find, as we will see, our backs are against the wall. Where it seems that everything has turned loose on us and the pressure is mounting and continues to mount without any measure and we find ourselves in difficult and situations and we find ourselves in difficult positions that we do not know where to go, what to do, who to turn to. Job found himself like this due to no fault of his. In fact, the scripture tells us as we would have read a couple weeks ago that Satan presented himself before God and as Satan presented himself, Satan said, listen, Job not serving you for nothing, you know. Job is serving you because you have blessed him and because you have given him some oxen and you have given, given him some asses and you have given him some, some sheep. And that's the reason why Job is serving you. And God said to Satan, no, Job is not serving me because of what he has gotten from me, but Job is serving me because he loves me. And Satan said, you're only saying that, man, take away all that he has from him. And once you take it away from him, he's going to curse you to the face and die. And God said, go ahead. And we saw what the devil did in chapter 1 from verse 13 to the end. What he did, he took away everything that Job had. He killed all Job's servants. He also attacked Job's family, his sons and his daughters. And he killed them. He destroyed them. And the Bible said, in all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. In other words, Job maintained his integrity. Job maintained his focus. He stayed true to God. How many of us would have done that? There are some of you today, you have forgotten God. You have given up on God because, well, listen, you and some brother in the church or you and some sister in the church may have gotten into some altercation and you did not like what they would have said to you or about you. And as a result of that, you have said in to yourself, Listen, I have washed my hands and I am not going back. Some of you have gone back on the Lord because of your spouse, maybe of your wife and your husband. He or she may not be serving God any longer. And as a result of that, you have become to that, you have come to that place, you have become fed up and you said, listen, and if he has gone and if she has gone, well, then I will go also. But no, Job was not like that. He lost the donkeys. He lost the sheep. He lost the oxen, he lost the camels, he lost his servants, he lost his children. And the Bible said in all of that, all the losses he experienced, Job did not sin. He did not lift a finger and accuse God and say, you see you God? 
He accused no one. He still gave praise to God. He gave praise to God. He's never stopped giving praise to God. He understood that, listen, that all that he would have received came from God. And he, he, he echoed sentiments to that effect. He said, listen, I came into this world naked. When I came into this world, I had no donkey. I had no sheep. I had no camel. I had no oxen. Listen, I had no children. I had no servants. When I came into this world, I was naked. And he said, listen, naked, I'm going to leave. And when I leave, I'm not going to take them with me. As I came into this world, so will I depart. So therefore then, bless the name of the Lord. He has given me for them for a period of time. And therefore, I will bless him for what he has done. And let me tell you something. We got to give God praise. And we got to give God thanks for what he has done. I'm not saying to you, settle for where you are. God, maybe, and God has promised to bless us. God has promised to prosper us. God has promised to bless the works of our hands as we put our hands to do. In fact, the Bible said, blessed is the man, according to Psalm 1, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. The scripture goes on to explain and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So God has already promised to bless the works of our hands. So we're not going to sit down and fold our hands. No. But at the same time, we've got to recognize that what we have received, we have received it as a result of God. And we are not taking it with us when we are going. We are going to leave it right here. So therefore then, do not focus on what you have received, but focus on him who has given you what you have received. I need to repeat that so that it can sink deep into the spirit of some of you. Do not focus on what you have received, but focus upon him who has given you what you have received. And that is what Job did. That is what Job did. He focused on God who had given him everything that he had received. And the Bible said, Job bowed himself. He shaved. He rent his mantle as a sign of grief and mourning. And the Bible said he worshipped Almighty God. You need to know that in the midst of your crisis, you need to worship God. Why we need to worship God? Because God is a good God. God is a merciful God. I want to say something to you today, friend. Regardless of what you may be experience, experiencing at this point in time, regardless of what you may be going through at this point in time, God, once you are serving God, and once you are faithful to God, whatsoever comes your way, it has come for the honor and glory of God. God wants to be glorified by what you are experiencing as you stay faithful and as you stay true to him. You see, God does not operate as how we operate. We operate and then we think. We are limited. We do not see the future. And we cannot know everything and we do not know everything. But God knows everything. So in the midst of Job's crisis, in the midst of Job's predicament, and in the midst of Job's upheaval that he was experiencing, that his wife said to him, you need to curse God and die. And his friends came and they were trying to condemn him as a result of what he had experienced and what he was going through. And they, they, they really laid it on him. In the midst of all of that, Job remained focused because somehow maybe in Job's heart, Job understood that, listen, God does nothing. Hallelujah. Everything that God does, it's for for his honor and for his glory. So therefore, then what you experience in, you, in your life, God wants to get the glory. God wants to get the glory. He's doing this for his honor. He's doing this for his glory so that men will know and men will understand that he is God, that he's a faithful God, that he's a just God, and that he needs to be served. So therefore, then I say to you, stand your ground. Maintain your integrity in Almighty God, and God is going to see you through. So the first thing I want to say to you in the midst of your crisis, 
crisis. Worship God. Do not stop worshiping God. Some of you, you're not reading the Bible again. You have cut out prayer because the pressure is too much on you. You are not going to the house of God again. You are not fellowshipping again. Your friends and your brethren are calling on you. And they're saying, we have not seen you. What's up? Some good friend, some good brother, some good sister, sister who is so concerned. They are calling you and you're giving all sorts of excuses. Stop making excuses. Get up and begin to worship God. The psalmist declares in Psalm 118 and the 24th verse, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist also declares, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Where is your praise? You have lost it. Get up and begin to praise the Lord. Get up and begin to thank the Lord for his goodness and for his mercies. Jeremiah echoed, God, it's because of your greatness. It's because of your faithfulness. It's because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Your compassions, they fail not. Great is your faithfulness. God has been faithful. Do not stop worshiping God. Be like Paul and be like Silas in the midst of a Philippian jail, in the midst of a Philippian dungeon where they were physically restricted as a result of the charge which the Philippian jailer received. He thrust them into maximum security. But the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto Almighty God. Some of you that are viewing me and viewing this telecast right now, you have lost your praise. Where is your song? That most times on the morning when you awoke up from sleep, when you awake from sleep, when you got up from sleeping, yeah, you sang the praises of Almighty God and the neighbors could have heard you. You went to work singing and rejoicing. What has happened? Because I have a subdomestic problem or because I have a situation in my family or because the doctors have come and they have diagnosed that I have stage whatever it is. Let me tell you something. Begin to praise God. That's why Paul, right into the church at Philippi, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, he said, Man, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I am saying to you, do not stop worshiping God. When you get into the house of Almighty God, express yourself. Lift your hands. Say hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Cheer yourself up. God is still in control. And I want to say to you, the scripture tells us no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Do not be like Mistress Job. She said, let me tell you something. Forget God. It's better you curse God and die. You're better dead than alive. And he said, ma'am, you are speaking as one of the foolish women. Speak. I'm saying to you, no, sir, the reason why you're on planet Earth right now is God has you here for a purpose. God has you for a purpose. That's the reason why you have not moved. Don't allow the enemy to fill your mind with negative thoughts, suicidal thoughts, and tell yourself, well, listen, there is no hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. Glory be to God. All, all hope may seem to have evaded you, but there is hope. Once Jesus is alive, there is hope. Glory be to God. So I'm saying to you, continue to worship Almighty God. Get yourself into the house of God. Get yourself back to the place where you were in God. Lift your hands and give him praise. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Lift your hands and worship him because God deserves your praise. He deserves your worship. The psalmist said, because your loving kindness is better than life, 
my lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. And the psalmist also declares in Psalm 113, this is the day, not this is the day, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So wake up this morning praising, go through the day praising, go to bed tonight praising God. Let the devil know that, listen, whatsoever you are experiencing and whatsoever he has thrown against you, listen, you're going to still praise Almighty God because God is a God that tells us he will not give us more than we can bear. And also in the book of Proverbs, there is a friend that stick at what? Closer than a brother. So therefore, do like Job, worship God, give him praise, give him thanks. The problem with many of us, we look at the objects, we look at the blessings, and we do not look at the blesser. We look at the gifts, oh, and they're so beautiful, they are so magnificent. Oh, my Lord, you know, my friend or my neighbor or my co-worker or my classmate, they do not have what I have. And we begin to compare ourselves with each other. And therefore, then now you, you get caught up. You have gotten caught up with what you have. Listen, the gifts, but we fail to recognize the giver. I say to you today, friend. If you have the giver, you have the gifts. If you have the blesser, you have him who blesses you. If you have him who blesses you, you have all the blessings. And I'm saying to you also, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So therefore then be like Job, worship Almighty God. Secondly, answer your critics and answer them by the life you live. Job said to his wife, and listen to me, some of us have to make a distinction when it comes to serving God, where family is concerned, and where friends are concerned, and where co-workers are concerned. He's speaking to his wife. His wife has spoken to him, and his wife's ad advice was, curse God and die, because you are covered with sores from top to bottom. I cannot approach you. You neither can you approach me. Look at your state. You are no good for yourself. So therefore, you are no good for yourself. You are no good to me. On top of that, the children have gone. They, are di they have died. They are all dead. So what's the sense? So it's best you go too. Because you are no good to yourself. You are no good to me. And Job said, hey lady, back up a little bit. Hold it here. No, 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 no. You are talking foolishly. If we have received good from God, we shall also receive evil. evil. And Job is speaking at this point in time because he does not know that it's a battle between the devil and Almighty God. And he is the center of it. He does not know. He has not gotten that revelation. And sometimes you do not know what God is doing. We do not know what God is doing. As a result of your stand that you have taken, and as a result of your faithfulness, do you know how many persons are encouraged? Do you know how many persons are looking at you and they're saying, boy, listen, if Harry could make it, or if John can make it, or if Janet can make it, or if Joy can make it, listen to me, I can make it also. Listen, Job is standing and he's standing firm. And he's answering his critics by the life that he lived. And he's saying, listen to me, even though God slay me, yet will I trust him. So therefore then, we need to answer our critics by the life that we live. Let's hold on to Almighty God. That's why Pilate was baffled when they questioned Jesus and, uh, and the, the, the level of accusations that they, were, they, were, they brought against him. Jesus stood firm. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Stand firm. Let me say something to you. Stand firm. Stand firm in Almighty God. I want to let you know that today, friend. Glory to God that you can make it. Stand upon the word of Almighty God. God will not let you down. God will not forsake you. God will not turn his back upon you. 
God is going to be with you always. What is your need today? What are you experiencing? What are you really going through that seemingly it has gotten the upper hand of you? Stay firm. Worship God. And God is going to see you through. I want to pray for those of you who are not saved. You do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have never opened up your life and received him into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's do that right now. Let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I'm a sinner. I have sinned and I've come short of your glory. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my life. Cleanse me from my sin. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Help me, Lord Jesus, to live for you, to serve you in spirit and in truth all the days of my life. I thank you now for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can receive your miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those who are believing you for a miracle. A miracle in their life. A miracle in their marriage. A miracle in their home. A miracle on the job. Wheresoever they are believing you for a miracle today. Oh God, in your love and in your mercy, Stretch your hand towards them in Jesus' name. We come against the enemy and all his attacks. We come against the enemy and all his strategies, all he has concocted against the people of God. And Father, I defeat these plans. I confound these strategies in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance. And I thank you for freedom in Jesus' name. I bless you, Lord. And I thank you for miracles. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, as I usually tell you, you do not have any trouble. All you need is faith in Almighty God. For with God, nothing is impossible. You are just one step away from your miracle. Hallelujah. I'll be back next week in the will of the Lord to share with you again from the word of Almighty God. This is Pastor McCall saying, so long until we meet again. Says this. I